Hello everyone, and I have a brilliant chess game to show you by Paul Morphy, and his opponent is Paul Capdeville, not a famous chess player, but he has the same name with Paul Morphy, and but he's not not Paul Morphy at all. This was a blindfolded chess game by Paul Morphy. He was against four people at the same time, from 1864. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Morphy starts the game with e4 when he was blindfolded e5. Knight to f3, Morphy always played e4. Bobby Fischer said about e4, best by test. Knight to c6, bishop to c4, bishop to c5. So we have the Italian game and the Evans gambit. The sacrifice is accepted, accepting the gambit. c3, bishop goes back. Morphy cancelled, knight to f6, charging the center, exchanging the pawns, bishop to b4, attacking, knight in. Bishop to d5. But now attacking to rook. What now? Well, Morphy sacrificed to rook. Bishop takes on e4. Bishop takes on a1. Capturing the rook. But now bishop to g5. But in this position, black would like to castle. Also, maybe making the bishop active. Capturing the pawn, saving the bishop. Maybe it's something like that. And black would also like to castle, but watch this. Paul Morphy is not allowing that. Bishop to g5, and this is attacking the queen, pushing the pawn and defending. So there is no time. E takes on f6, capturing the pawn, and then back. Bishop takes on c6, and this also opens the e file. Capturing the bishop, but actually in this position, computer says this was the better move. Getting rid of the dark square bishop was the better move. Then bishop to a4, castling, and knight to a3, and actually a black is going to lose this bishop, because if bishop to b2, simply checking the king with the queen and then capturing the bishop, I believe is losing the piece, but still. Uh, black is in the ball game. This is not a losing position for black. So anyway, in the real chess game, we have bishop takes on c6 and then capturing the light square bishop, capturing away from the center. Morphy checks the king and we have king to f7. And what would you do? When Paul Morphy was blindfolded, again, he was blindfolded against four people simultaneously in this chess game. And actually, he didn't miss any beautiful tactics in this chess game. What a talent. He kept playing brilliantly, even when he was blindfolded, when he was seeing nothing, when he saw nothing. Well, Morphy played knight to e5. Check. King to g7. But in this position, if capturing the knight, then capturing the queen before, okay, after checking the king, uh, capturing the queen, and this is losing. But in this position, black played king to f7, but if king to d7, then still we have knight to e5, and black is in trouble. So if king to d6, this is forking the king and the queen. And if king to e7, then check, double check, discover check, and winning the queen, forking the king. And the queen, and this is also losing for Paul Capdeville. Okay, so in this position we have king to f7, knight to e5, king to g7, of course not capturing the knight. And it is white to move. What would you do in this position? The blindfolded Paul Morphy didn't miss anything. I'm sure you can also see the moves of Paul Morphy. We are training with computers, we have the technology, all kinds of opportunities. Morphy had none of that. There was not even established theory about chess, but he was still playing like a grandmaster. Bishop to h6 by Paul Morphy. <laughs> what a move, what a move. Black has to accept the sacrifice for not getting checkmated, but this is walking into the forking. Knight to f7, forking the king, and the queen, and this is losing, the queen. 
But after this fantastic aesthetic move, if saving the king, what happens then? Can you see the winning move? Then queen to b3, this is check. And only defense, checking the king. And bishop to g4, the only defense, capturing the bishop, checkmate. Black is getting checkmated, and there is no defense. So in this position we have king takes on h6, knight to f7 for not getting checkmated, and this is losing the queen and the chess game. Maybe rook takes knight, but then queen in. Paul Morphy is planning to visit the king with the rook, rook to e7, and then checkmating the king. So rook to d7, and knight to d2. Rook to f7, but in this position, if saving the bishop, then rook in. Let's say bishop to e5, some move, and this position is also losing, threatening checkmate. So let's take it back. We have knight to d2, rook to f7, and then rook takes on a1. Getting rid of the bishop, developing the bishop, rook to e1, bishop to d5, rook up, king, king back, knight up, rook over, targeting the g-pawn, but Paul Morphy captured the pawn anyway. Rook takes on g2, of course if king to h1, that would be a fatal mistake, so Paul Morphy simply played king to f1, and in this position, he is threatening checkmate. So black has to defend. But Paul Morphy is simplifying the game. He has the queen. Again, exchanging the rooks, but don't forget that Paul Morphy was blindfolded. Bishop back, pawn up, pawn up, queen over, pawn up. And Paul Morphy captured the bishop and kept the wheel. Can't touch the knight. He played. King to h7, the most desperate move ever possible. Of course, he could also resign in this position, but if rook takes on g8, queen to h6, check, mate baby. There is no defense. So we have knight takes on g8, king to h7, knight check. Rook is pinned, escaping like a chicken, check, and then check, mate. Can you believe it? Would you believe it? This was a blindfolded chess game by Paul Charles Morphy. What a game. Unbelievable. And he was blindfolded once again against four people simultaneously. And this is how he was playing. This game was played in New Orleans at the hometown of Paul Morphy. In the beautiful New Orleans. In a sunny day. What a game. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more classic chess games from the chess history. Take care and bye bye.